Drop! Oh, fucking bitch! Okay. Clutch. It's automatic though. I have this OA350Z Nismo 6 speed, very nice. Of course, it's a 6 speed. This has a mid mount turbo kit, boosted performance, very good. It is only at about 11 to 12 psi, peaks 12, goes back down to 11. Uh, stock motor, I had already tuned this one before on the exact same boost. The only reason it's here today is because it got upgraded math sensors and a fuel system done. So when he builds the motor later on and turns up the boost or if he wants to turn up the boost a little bit more on the stock motor that's up to him so i asked them you know how much boost you want to do now that you have uh, one of george's fuel system which is actually the best one out there and the maps are not maxed out and he said the same boost i was like okay well then why don't you just hold off on installing the maps because that takes a minute or two to install anyone can do that and the fuel system well that's gonna require a retune for the fuel system and he said oh it's fine the same boost so okay so you know it's gonna make about the same power you know maybe something changed in the engine so it might make a little less a little bit more you know it's a different day especially when it comes to boosted cars and a cars if it's a different day you know you could literally put out the exact same number as you did like a month ago anyway so yeah that's what he wanted he wants to retune on the exact same boost so i just gotta uh, fix the fueling and the math sensors and make sure everything else is still running good so i just finished it and yeah it actually made 10 more horsepower and the only thing that changed other than the maths because obviously math sensors do not add horsepower the fuel system does not add fuel uh <laughs> the fuel system does not add horsepower those are supporting mods that will allow you to make more power when needed when those stock components or whatever aftermarket components you had were already maxed out. So on, on this one, once uh, we changed the spark plugs, because the spark plugs were really, really bad, and they were actually cracked on, on his spark plugs here. I'm not sure where he got it from. As soon as they pulled them out, I could just tell by looking at it, it didn't look like good quality, even though it had a brand name on there. I believe it was a HKS, which is a very expensive spark plug. It's about 25 to thirty dollars each depending on where you got it from but every time you know you could just tell by looking at the spark plug the, the quality of it you have to know exactly where to look and that's why a lot of these tuners they, they don't know they, they i don't know they're blind or something they need to see a doctor optometrist anyway so we put some spark plugs on there that we have here they're actually just oem oem ones gapped and yeah, it made about 10 more horsepower than last time. So I'm pretty sure those spark plugs were also holding it back back then when he tuned the first time. So obviously on this one, I'm going to help him out. Uh, he's brought me this car a few times already. He At one point, he, he went somewhere else. And the car just ran like complete poop. Took it somewhere uh, some of, out of state on their dyno day when the car was NA. And... Um, he wanted to have it ready for for boost so they did their own fuel system over there and, and they attempted to tune it in a and they just had so many problems he gave up and he came back to me this guy's very very happy well uh, once he came back to me and said he'll never go back to the other person and yeah i'm gonna tell him his car's ready guys i have an oa g37 five speed he's gonna get the upt intakes again as you can see the date right there 10 2007 so this is an early 08 model and it's gonna go on Accutech. Very beautiful T60.
this is the third one for today. I'm gonna go ahead and tune it. That's it. Hello? This guy's always using losing his Ecutech OBD tube. <laughs> he bought like five of them already. He like keeps losing them. Guys, so I just removed the uh, startup map I had in this car and did uh, some more adjustments on here, and I'm uploading it right now so I can go ahead and do the first pull and see how it goes on this one stock turbo is 485 it is on flex fuel as full exhaust and we will see what this one will do I just finished this 18 Q60 Red Sport with the XDI injectors, the 2100 CC injectors plus 70. So it is on full E85 as a flex fuel kit that was already previously installed when it was tuned by somebody else. As the spool FX200 fuel pump and an aftermarket low pressure pump. So this car came in, I uh, made a video before because it was in lip mode. Um, it wouldn't start maybe after like 20 tries after it started it was just running completely bad so after a lot of diagnostics uh george was able to find out that there were kind of like a lot of things wrong with it which is kind of weird i, I don't know i guess just a coincidence or something because in the end uh, there's really nothing wrong with the other person's tune in this case so this guy just decided to tune with me uh he wanted to tune his uh, vq when he had a vq with me but i guess he couldn't make it on time or something but I did find the old messages that he sent me a couple years ago. So at the time that he got this, I wasn't tuning these cars yet. So he went with, obviously, someone who tunes these cars. And like I said, he was uh, driving it and with the other tune, uh, as far as he said, for three months. So obviously, once you tell me the story, you know, we can put some things together. So that's how we knew that it had to have been something else. So once the car was running, the thing is we changed so many parts, some, some of the aftermarket parts that it needed a tune just to turn on so i had to go in and do my thing so uh once they told uh, we told them that the car is ready to go but it just has a like a startup tune and a cruise tune so if he wants he could go with, back to his tuner and he could tell them the things that were changed and they can continue from there to finish the tune or he could just tune with me and he decided to tune with me and so this is again on 85 stock turbos with the exhaust, it does have uh, high flow cats, the aftermarket injector, so basically the whole fuel system. Stock turbos, 516 wheel horsepower, 501 torque to the wheels. I had previous to, previously tuned another one, it was a white sedan, I believe. In my video, I'm not too sure if I posted it or not yet, I think I did. It was 460 or 480 on full E85. So on this one here, I did try some other things to get some more power out of it and it worked. But in general, this specific motor, this car is actually better than the uh, sedan, the, the condition of the motor. So I, I could always tell by like the baseline and during tuning. So the sedan always put lower numbers every time, no matter what, compared to this one. But the sedan still runs really, really good. He's very, very happy. And um, he wants to come back so I could try a couple things that I did on this one to get a little bit more power out of it. But I know for sure how that engine runs. So it's not going to make what this one made. But at least it'll be, he's going to gain more power. He might gain another 20, maybe 30 wheel horsepower compared to last time. But yeah, this one is done. 517 wheel. Pretty cool. Pretty exciting. E85. So I'm going to tell this guy that. His car is ready, so he could pay George for his diagnostics, and then he could pay for the retune with me. And that's it for this one here. Hey, All right, guys, welcome back. Oh. So I have this 2012 G37 sedan. It is going on E85 today and UPT three inch intakes. This car is previously tuned by me on 91 with stock injectors. 
and we're going to see what it does today. As I have this 2017, it's a late 2017, Q50, it's a base model. It has uh, intakes, lower down pipes, exhaust, dual exhaust, and it is on 91. So this is the baseline right here, 302 wheel horsepower, 294 torque to the wheels. This one's already smoking, came in smoking. Uh, the turbos are smoking. It smells a lot like oil. The, the engine has oil. I believe he just did an oil change and um, I, I checked it, it's good. So yeah, very, very common problem on the older base models. So uh, George already gave him some estimates on some other turbos. See if he wants to do that later on. But for now, we'll see uh, how well everything is uh, boosting and how good the motor is. All right, the first adjustments. Ew. <laughs> Let's try and fix that right there. So these are just the first adjustments. Look at all those gains right there. The turbos are definitely affecting this, but let's see what we could do to go ahead and fix that. It really, really smells like, like burnt oil. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, today is Saturday. I am dying. This sauce is pretty hot. <sighs> oh, <laughs> I actually did moan for real. It was like really hot. I mean, I like it. It's not like super hot, but it just tastes so good. Uh, I haven't bought extra. So this is my third one right here. If you guys <clears throat> have seen it on my Instagram story. This one, uh, email tune from a Mr. Josh. Uh, 370Z 2010. So I tuned your friend's car, I believe, a few years ago, and now it's your turn. So you guys are going to share the uh, upper of cable. This one, uh, obviously, you know, he did have the choice of uh, Accutech or upper of, but he wanted to save money because his friend already had the upper of cable. So he went the upper of choice, which the power outcome is going to be exactly the same. It's the, <clears throat> the software gives you, obviously, you know, fuel timing, ignition timing, cam timing, whatever the difference of course there, then power wise there's absolutely zero difference it's more in the features of it and the menus you know the 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 gui gui the interface if you know about software different things i mean i, I could make a whole video on that which i'm probably not going to do for certain reasons maybe uh way later on but in this case instead of buying an ecutech kit brand new and paying for licensing and the tune service waiting for shipping he already has his friend's cable so that saves him a lot of money all he has to do is buy the licensing from uprev so they can send it to him to his cable uh so i guess a little side note so when it comes to ecutech uh, us uh, master tuners the licensing does come directly from us and then we either attach it to your dongle and then send it to you or if you already have one but it has no licensing then we'll send you the licensing so that comes from us with uprev it always comes directly from uprev it doesn't matter if you're a, a pro tuner a backyard tuner um, or you're just trying to buy a license for whatever it always comes directly from them if you ever receive it from your tuner that's because Basically, your tuner was the middleman for that, and they had to contact Uprev. Uprev sent them the licensing file, and then now your tuner sent you the licensing file. So I always have my customers go directly to Uprev because for the licensing, because it avoids any issues or any delays. It's just straight to them. I don't that that helps me um, be more efficient time wise. So it would have nothing to do with me. You're just dealing directly with them for the licensing, which is going to be the same price. So why add on extra things for me to do while I'm busy and you're waiting for me to reply when you could just skip that part and go straight to them. And then after that, 
once you have the licensing, you guys already know when you do email tunes with me, you just let me know you got the licensing and we'll go ahead and try to start that email tune as soon as possible. Uh, oh, it's just the corner. It's okay. I'll just buy another bumper. All right, so George just uh, got his lunch. I'm going to swap it out with that one. The funny thing is, he's not going to notice where the real one is at until I tell him. Huh. Guys, I have this 2010 G37. It is a coupe. And it came in because the windows weren't working. And I believe George found the issue on that one had something to do with uh, some wiring being, I guess, like corroded, not making uh, correct contact. Uh, he fixed it. The windows go up and down, but now the car doesn't start. So we're trying to identify some of the modules here, which I was actually able to find out that in this case, the BCM doesn't work. <laughs> it's funny. Obviously, the BCM has a bunch of codes for it as well. But it literally, in this specific code, it literally just says BCM. That's it. It doesn't say anything. Normally, normally it'll say like BCM and a description. And then this literally just says BCM. Like it's just telling you it doesn't work. So I uh, just need to transfer some information from the old one to the new one. Because we do have a new one right here. And then see if that works. But obviously something is wrong with the BCM because it's literally giving us a, a code for it. So, and the car did start before, so now um, George has to fix that, or, well, now I have to fix it. <laughs> and then, yeah, so let's see uh, if I can get this car to start, because it doesn't want to start. Okay. Clutch. It's automatic, though. We're getting somewhere here. I had to do a bunch of stuff. This, the, this key stuff is... It's very confusing sometimes the way the Nissan system, Infinity, it's it's pretty confusing when you start having problems and sometimes it'll tell you, for example, you know, this part doesn't work and you take it out and you actually test it out, you know, resistance, whatever, <clears throat> voltage. And okay, for sure, it just, it doesn't work. So you know that that part needs to be replaced. You replace it and you try to program it and then just nothing else works. Like what? It doesn't make sense. I don't know why, why they did that. But anyways, so just doing some random stuff to see what works. But so far, it seems to be working. We got power on here, but for some reason it says clutch. But this is automatic. So uh, I found it. Uh, it kicked me out. It didn't work. Uh, uh, why? Why? Uh Aha uh -huh. Alright, so finally it's automatic now <laughs> and uh, I just programmed the windows as well. That's easy. You don't need a computer for that. I don't even think you could do it through the computer. I'm not too sure but There you go. So, uh, if you guys don't know, this is this might be on most cars, not not all of them. You know, it doesn't have to be just Nissan Infinity, but <sighs> for these cars, um, if you disconnect the battery or the BCM, the BCM itself, then your automatic window function doesn't work anymore. So it's just a temporary memory in the system. So once you lose, uh, once it loses power, then obviously it loses memory, whatever. So it's very simple. Uh, all you do is um, you manually go all the way up, but don't use the auto function and then let go. Wait, no, <laughs> that's wrong. Oh, okay, so you roll it all the way down manually. But I think I've done it with auto as well. It tells you not to do auto. And then don't use the auto to go up, just, mat just manually and then just, once it reaches up here, um, 
you're gonna pull up more to do the auto function and just hold it for about three seconds and then let go and then you can use the auto function down to go down by itself because the auto function down will always work even if there's no uh, programming and if you did it correctly when you go back up it's going to auto go up by itself so that's how you do it you do it obviously there's a coupe but you do it to all the doors like that you could kind of you if you know how to do it you could do it all four windows at the same time but yeah, i'm glad this one's fixed right here because she is a good customer of george's so i believe they're just gonna have to put uh, all these covers back on but i'm glad that this was fixed and then that one right there is also another customer of george's she's a really good customer she's been with him so obviously that one has nothing to do with me uh she's been with him honestly I don't, it might be seven eight years she's always brought her car in for service uh it's completely stock uh i don't think she lives around here and i i'm not too sure if it's this one this this, this owner right here but if this is the one whatever i'm saying i tell you the story there's one that she i believe doesn't live anywhere around here so she would bring the car in for maintenance and maintenance and and things like that obviously but i think it was just too far for her so she started going somewhere else or i don't know if it was an actual dealer an infinity dealer and they started telling her all these things because she did have problems at one point obviously it's not a new car anymore just regular wear and tear i don't remember what it was but she had like a problem with the car and i think they quoted her like three thousand dollars or something and and obviously she wanted a second opinion so she made the drive to bring the car to george at the old shop and i believe it was just like a 200 hundred dollar fix and they wanted to charge her three thousand dollars so the thing is about the dealership is obviously like i said before they gotta follow certain procedures they can't just skip around they have to go by the book and sometimes it just tells them to replace all the stuff right here so sometimes they can't just replace one part they might have to replace other things and obviously uh well i'm not gonna go into detail but i mean they gotta make money so wait what that's like Oh, that's before COVID, that was like 2017, 18? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Guys, I have this 370Z, I think it's a 2011. 6 b has a mid-mount turbo kit. Uh, supposedly it is on 14 pounds of boost, but we're gonna find out. So it's only on uh, spring it's on wastegate there's no boost controller currently flashing a file to get it to start it is on speed density so it is on ecutech and it's on e85 and we're gonna see uh what was done with this one this one the uh, owner had everything installed himself so let's see if nothing falls apart <laughs> so far it's not leaking any fuel though it does smell kind of strong I don't know if it's leaking it from the trunk or something because it does have a fuel system. If I buy an R34. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna buy one of those. Ooh. Alright guys.
guys. So, <clears throat> what do you think it made? Let me uh, save this real quick right here. Give me one second. Alrighty. pretty shiny right now I didn't wash it I just um, whatever however you say it like dusted it down so obviously that's not uh, how much power I drive with on the street because they're just uh, I mean they're not that bad of tires they're good tires but with that amount of power no it just obviously spins too much and still not good for the uh, transmission so it needs uh, like a better upgrade for the transmission for that.